Thank you for listening to the Give Vegas podcast. Per request, we are on to the Detroit Lions for their over-under win total prediction so you guys can win some more money. And after that, the next video will be the Falcons. If you want me to do another team, let me know. I'll put you in line after the Falcons. So with that being said, with the Lions, Vegas has that at 10.5 for the over-under win total prediction. And I'm going to get to that in a minute because I'm going to go through the whole schedule. We're going to go talk about this team. We're going to go through everything. But I got to start with the coaching staff. I don't like it. I don't. I don't like the GM, Brad Holmes. I don't like Dan Campbell as the head coach. And I don't like Aaron Glenn as the DC. And I'm going to be really frank about this. Brad Holmes as the GM in terms of who he drafts, who he gets. He's done an okay job, but he's done a half-ass job. He's never put the full puzzle together. And for that, to hell with you, bro. Like, you deserve to be fired. Dan Campbell, it's cute. Jeff Bridges, the dude. I mean, you want to go that route. You want to act like he's a player's coach, tough, all of that. He brings nothing to the table. And then Aaron Glenn, the D.C., doesn't bring anything when it comes to scheme. And honestly, and this is this is where we talk about this stuff here. If we're being frank, the only person that's semi doing his job in the guys that I just mentioned is Brad Holmes. That's it. That's it. And even he's not doing a full job. But now let's get into the team and you'll see what I'm talking about. What What this front office put together and what they didn't put together, we're going to get through it right now. But the coaching staff has never exceeded the expectation of this roster. Never. And that's why I'm calling them out. And that's why Lions fans need to be nervous this year. But I still got you guys. I still got you guys finishing at a good record. So don't get discouraged. But this is what's going to keep you from the championship game and the Super Bowl. And I'm just going to I'm just going to tell you that right now. It, it's it's hard for me to say, but let's get to it. So, first of all, I and I love to work my way down. The receiver position. The receiver position. Alvin Ross St. Brown has been hurt, but he is one of the league's best receivers. Give him credit. One of the best route runners I've ever seen. That's great. But you don't have anything to complement that at the receiver position. Yeah, I know people are going to comment Oh, Sam Laporta, this and that. Great. A good tight end don't mean nothing. It don't mean anything because he ain't Travis Kelsey. He ain't going to go over the middle and eat for you in the playoffs and kill people. So he's a good tight end. Great. That's fine. But what else do you have? Well, looking at the receiver position, outside of Amon Ross St. Brown, we've been waiting for Jamison Williams to come into his own. He hasn't done that yet. Until he does, then we're just sitting and waiting. There's nobody else on this roster that's going to step up as a number two or number three receiver to back up Amon Ross St. Brown. And don't use the excuse of Sam Laporta as tight end again because he's going to have his hands full. He's going to have one linebacker on him as soon as he comes off the line, and then he's going to have a safety on him anyway. So unless Jamison Williams steps up, this whole offense is just going to go right down the drain. Now, that being said, the positive points about this offense is the offensive line. It's very good. Not going to discredit where credit's due. Um, Taylor Decker, Glasgow, Ragnow, Zettler, and Sewell. That's going to be nasty. And the run game is what they're going to have to lean on which I respect, but David Montgomery is just going to keep getting older. He might be able to make some plays here or there, but Jameer Gibbs is going to be the guy that has to step up this year. And that gets into the story. Like the whole, this is why I go through everything guys. See now Jamison Williams and Jameer Gibbs, those two guys, they have got to be hungry and they have got to be worthy of their respected first-round picks that they each received. 
If they don't, then the Lions are going to sink heavy. They're not going to reach the plateau that I think they are, but I think they will. I do think Jamison Williams is going to step up. I think Jameer Gibbs is going to be nasty and do everything that he can do from that backfield position. Catch, be physical, be agile, all of that. That's why they drafted him in the first round. They wanted him to be an all-around good back, not just a power runner, not just a speed runner, all around really good. And I think it's possible. And I'm banking on that. I'm banking on it, but I'm calling it out too because I'm saying this is what needs to happen for this to succeed. Now let's get to the defense. And I'm not going to lie, guys. Defensive line depth is a huge issue with me. They don't have it. They they just simply don't have it. There, there is going to be so much stock put into this front four. It's going to be ridiculous. And it's going to come down to these guys right here. I'm going to tell you right now. DJ Reader, hopefully he can stay healthy. The Bengals got rid of him because they didn't feel like he could be on the field all the time. I hope he can be here. Ella McNeil, Levi Onzeruke, I, ho- I really hope they can step up and be that speed, physical pass rush that this team has needed in the interior with DJ Reader. And that would give him maybe one guy in rotation at least. And then, of course, we already know Aiden Hutchinson is going to be good. So that's not even a question. Aiden Hutchinson is going to be nasty as long as he's healthy. But – the, the names that I just mentioned, DJ Reader, Alan McNeil, Levi Onzuruke. If they can't get it done, if those three guys can't compliment Aiden Hutchinson, then this defense is doomed, straight doomed. That, there's a couple pieces I like in the linebacking core. I'll move on to there now because I just had to give drop that news on you guys. But – um, Jack Campbell, I really think he can be a physical, all-around really good linebacker. He's never going to be a safety linebacker where he can cover deep down the field. But he can do short zone. And from what I saw from the college film when he did come out a couple years ago, he has that physicality to just ram the running back and, and spot the ball. So I give credit to Jack Campbell, and he's going to work his way into that. But Alex Anzalone, like, I, I just – I think the linebacking core is a little weak too. I do. So, again, if anything is the weakness of this Lions team, it's going to be this defense. Now, let's look at the secondary. There is some promise, but, again, things that have to be proven, things that we haven't seen. So, first and foremost, Carlton Davis – from Tampa. Like if he comes in here, he's healthy. He's going to be a legit outside number one corner. That's not even a question. Lions had the money to pay him. Great. I love the fact they drafted Terry and Arnold in the first round to take on one of their cornerback spots. Now we got to see how it pans out, but I'm glad they at least put some stock into where it needed to be put. Brian branch at nickel corner. I've always loved him. Kirby Joseph coming back healthy. I think he's going to be good at free safety. But I think they could use another safety position. I'm not sold on Melifanamu. Not sold on that. And there is no depth behind the three guys that I just mentioned. Now, you guys might think it's boring when I read names off and do these things. But I just told you, beyond the top three guys that they have, they got nobody. Nobody. What are they going to do? So when they go up against these top juggernauts in the NFC, like they're going to they're going to put together games because they're going to physically dominate teams throughout the season. That's what's going to happen. But when it gets to the playoffs cuz yes, the Detroit Lions will make the playoffs. Don't hate on me. The Detroit Lions are going to make the playoffs. But after that, it's not going to be enough. It's not going to be enough because their defense is as weak as a piece of toilet paper that I want my ass with. And I'm being realistic with you guys about that. I'm just letting you guys know what's going to happen in the future. So with that being said, let's get to this record. Let's get to this. 
first game, Rams versus Lions, loss. Because the Rams are going to have too much chemistry, too much going on at the receiver position, too much speed for the Lions to deal with that defensively. Um, even though I think the Lions can put up some points in this game, I think the Rams are going to have a slot. This this probably will go over. This might be like, I don't know, 53, 54-point game. I could see that for the over-under. And I do think it's going to go under, but I think the Rams are going to be one step ahead here for the Lions in this particular game early on. Hopefully the Lions get their defense right as the year goes on, but not this early. Yeah, I already talked about that. Next game, Bucks versus Lions. Well, I got that as a W because the Bucks are kind of like a skeleton of a team. They got issues here. They got issues here. Old receivers. The defense isn't completely put together, especially on the back end. So Lions get this done just simply because they're going to stick to physical, fundamental football on the offensive side. Pound the rock. Play action. And they'll just let everything else take care of itself. Kill clock. I mean, and I really hate also how people are overrating Baker Mayfield. Like, just stop with that. Like, what? See, this is this is what's so lame about the off season. Like, th- time goes by, and then all of a sudden they're willing to anoint people credit for the, what they haven't given, even though they haven't done it. Like Baker Mayfield was average last year. And you're going to just say he's like one of the best quarterbacks in the league now. Shut the fuck up. Literally like lick my ass. Seriously. Next game. Lions versus Cardinals win. I actually have a record prediction for this. That was the only one I put out there. Um, 28, 26. I think it's going to be like a bullshit close game. And of course, I'll re I'll re look at that when I get to that game during the regular season. But Lions win that just simply because they're more deeper and more physical than the Cardinals on all aspects. But the reason why I picked that spread, just because I think that's going to be a trap game. People are going to think the Lions are so stacked against the Cardinals that that you'd want to bet the Cards. So I just wanted to point that out ahead of time. Next game. Seahawks versus Lions win because the Seahawks are just a shell, a brittle shell. It's like almost like when you crack an egg to make your scrambled eggs, whatever. That's what the Seahawks are because everybody gets hurt on both sides of the football constantly, and they don't even have enough defensive depth. So, Lions win that just because they're physical, they're strong, they're going to get it done. Next game, Lions versus Cowboys win because here we go again, the off-season media trying to hype the Cowboys up, trying to make them seem like they're good. Normally, I would agree and say the Cowboys have a chance because they always had a great offensive line, all the stuff. But this is the weakest that I've ever seen the Cowboys in my life. They are depleted on both sides of the football just because they had to pay Dak and they want to pay C.D. Lamb and all this stuff. Great. You do that. And Jerry, but Jerry Jones, man, I mean, I feel bad. He's like Joe Biden. He's like Joe Biden. I feel bad when people get old because they just don't get it. They just can't fucking put the receptors together up in here. I mean, I'm glad I still can, but they can't. Cowboys, you suck. That's a win. That is a win for the Lions. Next game, Lions versus Vikings win because J.J. McCarthy can't even throw a lob a ball down to the first, you know, the catcher in baseball. That That's the saddest thing I've ever seen. J.J. McCarthy is so sad. I, I just want – I'm almost ready to throw up now. I, I'm just going to move on. I'm just going to move on. Next game. Titans versus Lions win because the Titans are completely depleted. Honestly, guys, I don't even have time to talk about how bad the the Titans are. It's really sad. I think their defense could be okay, but their offense is so disgusting. It's so disgusting. There was actually like this really hot girl that I was talking about. about She's a Titans fan. We're talking and I was like, yeah, like she was like saying like, oh, well, Jamal Adams, like he might help hurt whatever. 
And I'm just like, yeah, at the end of the day, the defense is what's going to save this team. The offense is what's going to sink that team. Will Levis. Will, Will Levis coming in there strutting his stuff like he's a used car, set, used car salesman. He's going to come in there trying to sling it like, oh, Oh, I, I, oh, I couldn't get that 10-yard cutback route. Dude, fuck the Titans, man. They fucking suck. Next game, Lions versus Packers loss because the Packers are heading in a way better direction. Way better direction. I respect the Lions, but the Packers have put this together for years. And you got to give credit where it's due. And Jordan Love, He's going to be better than Jared Goff. He's going to do better in this game than that, especially at this point of the season. He's just going to be ready. Uh, the Packers are just too sound. The Lions, I respect everything that they do, but the Packers have that defense, and that's the difference. Next game, Lions versus Texans loss because I have immense respect for C.J. Stroud. I can't believe – the amount of disrespect. I, I wasn't expecting it. Like, this isn't even from me or from anybody. The immense amount of disrespect for C.J. Stroud in the media. I, I don't get it. He's amazing. And they've put all the right tools around him. Now, I disagree about Stephon Diggs. Like, he's not going to make a physical catch in the playoffs when you need him to. But regardless of that, They'll use Stephon Diggs for his speed. Other than that, I really don't know how you could knock the Houston Texans. That's why I got the Texans winning in this game. See, And a lot of people aren't even willing to put C.J. Stroud in their top five quarterbacks. There's a lot of hate going around right now. I don't like it. Not like it one bit. Next game, Jags versus Lions. Win. Because the Jags are like a flimsy team. It just doesn't get it. And they got a girl for a quarterback in Trevor Lawrence. Or is it Caitlin Clark? Oh, I don't know. Well, sorry. But win for the Lions because they're going to rape him a new asshole. Next game, Lions versus Colts. Win because the Colts don't know what they're doing either. They think Anthony Richardson is going to be the next coming. And maybe they'll pull some games out of their ass. But they're not going to get it done down the stretch. Next game, Bears versus Lions win because the Bears don't know what they're doing. Caleb Williams with his beard, with his scruffy beard that he don't want to shave. And do you really think he's going to go out there and sling it all around the park, in co especially in college when he couldn't get it done against good teams? No. And then – what I've been hearing from Caleb Williams fans is that every time that he's failed in college or whatever, they always blame the team or they blame other people. But the bottom line is, is anytime you've seen Caleb Williams lose a game in college, the game was there for him to win and he fucked up. So enjoy Bears fans. Have fun with that. You're losing. Next game, Packers versus Lions win because out of respect, out of respect, for the NFL and what we got here, Lions and Packers are going to split. And that's just how it works sometimes, guys. And you're asking me for a bet right now? I have to be realistic about it. Next game, Bills versus Lions. Lost because Josh Allen is ridiculous. Next game, Lions versus Bears win because the Bears are fucking lame. Next game, Lions versus 49ers. Lost because the 49ers are better coached and they're more physical. And then the final game, Vikings versus Lions win because the Vikings are lame as fuck for the reasons I mentioned earlier about simple the fact that they don't even know how to get a quarterback. J.J. McCarthy, like, he has a noodle arm, and they want him to be the franchise quarterback. I, I mean, honestly, guys, like, it, it just makes me so sad to see teams fuck up like that. Sorry, Mike Florio. But, yeah, you fucked up. Your team sucks. At least admit it. At least post something to make that. I'm just so sick of that, too. Like, I love Mike Florio. He's responded to some of my questions, and he's been great. But come on, man. Quit just reporting the news instead of analyzing the news. Analyze the news and 
make truth out of it instead of just assuming and just posting the news and saying, well, okay, JJ McCarthy's the new quarterback. Like, okay, he missed through a pitch at the the MLB game. And then you just let it go like it's nothing. But then it's like, dude, like your quarterback sucks. You're not even willing to admit that? Whatever. So with that being said, here's the final prediction, guys. The bet you've been waiting for. I'll post it in the comments section so you don't have to listen to the whole video if you don't want to. But it is good to listen to the whole video because you get knowledge about where teams are at. But Vegas has it at 10 and a half. And I got it at 12 and a half, 12.5. My bet. So we'll go through it right now. Rams versus Lions loss. Upset one of the week. The fuck betters up. Next game, Bucks versus Lions win. Next game, Lions versus Cardinals win. Next game, Seahawks versus Lions win. Next game, Lions versus Cowboys win. Next game, Lions versus Vikings win. Titans versus Lions win. Lions versus Packers loss because they're splitting. Next game, Lions versus Texans loss. Next game, Jags versus Lions win. Lions versus Colts win. Bears versus Lions win. Packers versus Lions win. Bills versus Lions loss. Lions versus Bears win. Lions versus 49ers, loss. Vikings versus Lions, win. And again, Vegas has it set at 10 and a half. I got to go in 12 and a half. 12 and a half. 12.5, guys. So with that being said, make sure to hit the like button, share the videos, and subscribe. I'll be here. Um, do the best I can. Don't know what more you guys want from me, but I'm here to rock and roll.